In this video, we're going to look at subscenes in Unity. This is an excellent feature that enables you to build massive worlds with excellent performance by utilizing Unity dots and dynamically loading and unloading chunks of your world. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here we're going to look at what are subscenes and how we can use them. We're going to create a system to load and unload subscenes on the fly. This will enable us to have massive worlds while keeping excellent performance. An example of this system in use is in Unity's Megacity demo project. In that project, the city is absolutely massive, with each building having over 100,000 game objects. Now, if you loaded the whole city at once, it would not be playable at all. So instead, what happens is the assets get streamed as they are needed. Now, that system is a bit more advanced than what we're going to do here, but still a very similar approach. The main difference is instead of just loading and unloading subscenes, it also has scenes and subscenes with different levels of details. Essentially, it's a lot system like what's commonly used in meshes, but for entire subscenes. So every single building has two representations, a low level of detail scene and a high detail scene. The low level is very performant with low detail and the high level gets loaded as the player gets close. So that means our world in total can have millions of objects because only the ones that are needed are loaded at the same time. Okay, so this is what we want to make. Over here is my player character and I can simply move him around. Now, as you can see, there's a map with some rocks and objects and stuff, and I can move around, and as I move, you can see that the map is still there. It goes in and out, and there you go, I can keep moving, and the map is always there. However, it's really not always there. The map is actually being loaded and unloaded based on the player position. So if I pause right here and look in the editor, there you go, over here you can actually see what is happening. Our map is split into a whole bunch of subscenes, and only the ones near the player are currently loaded. So over here, as the player is moving, you can see the various parts of our level being streamed in and out of existence. So with this way, you can have some really massive worlds while keeping your game CPU time and memory consumption very low. So the game only ever loads exactly what it needs and nothing more. So using this type of setup, you can essentially make infinite worlds without any issues with performance. And this is not just in the game, all of these performance benefits also work in the editor. So when a subscene is unloaded, there you go, there are no game objects or entities occupying any space time. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so this is our very interesting system that is made possible thanks to subscenes, so let's look at how they work. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. I have my player character and not much else, just a bunch of objects and a background, and I can move them around. So here we are in the editor, and you can see the player right here. It's just a simple quad with a tag to identify the player and then being converted into an entity. And then we have the background, all the sprites, rocks, bushes, and so on. So let's place a bunch more objects. Okay, here we have a bunch of random objects. Now, in order to make a subscene, it's actually extremely simple. All we do is we select all of our objects, so let's select all of these, okay? Now we right click and create new subscene from selection. And yep, just like that, the subscene has been created. So now all of these objects are inside the subscene. So over here, we can click on the arrow to expand it. And there you go, we can see all of the individual objects inside of our subscene. Now, if you select the subscene and look in the inspector, you can see some buttons to interact with the subscene. So right now, as you can see in the hierarchy, we can view all of the individual game objects inside of our subscene. So that means that our subscene is currently open. So we are looking at the game object representation. This is useful if we want to modify things. So let's say this rock, move it a bit over there. Okay. Now, when I'm done setting up all of the objects, I can select the subscene, make sure save any changes and then click on close. And once you do, you can see that on the hierarchy, the subscene has been closed, so we no longer have an arrow, and we can no longer edit individual game objects. Instead, what is happening is all of our objects are being represented as entities. So if we want to edit, we click on edit, there we have all of our game objects again, so we can move them around. Then when we're done, we make sure that we save and we close, and there you go, we have super fast entities. Now the conversion is stored in a binary file, 
Now that's important because that means that loading is super fast since all of the conversion is done right now and not when we're actually loading. So this makes loading and unloading during runtime extremely fast. If we run the game right now, yep there you go, everything still looks the same so I still have my player, I can move them around and I can see all of the objects. And if we pause, there you go, we have our subscene here in the hierarchy and if we look into the entity debugger, over here we can see all of our entities. And then here specifically we have two special entities. So one for our scene and one for our scene section. In the scene section, you can see the streaming state that is currently loaded. And if we select our subscene and look in the inspector, over here we have a button to unload it. So let's look at the game at the same time. Now click on unload. And there you go, all our objects are now gone. So the subscene has been completely unloaded. And if we look into the entity debugger, and yep, over here you can see that we just have the scene and the scene section and all of the other entities are now gone. So you can see how subscenes are a great way of organizing objects and easily unloading or unloading them. Also, inside of a subscene, you don't need to add the convert to entity script. So for example, if we open this one and then go into this object and I add the convert to entity script, there you go, I have a nice notice in here. Essentially, it's saying that this object is already going to be converted inside of a subscene, so this component is meaningless in here. Every single object inside of a subscene already gets converted into an entity the second that you hit close. All right, so here you can see the basics for how subscenes work. You essentially take a bunch of game objects and put them inside of a subscene. Now, when the subscene is closed or the game is running, then everything inside it is using super fast entities. And when you click on edit and open the subscene, you can go back into the normal game object representation and edit the objects as usual. And when you're running the game, if the subscene is unloaded, then all of the entities cease to exist, which means they don't take up any memory or CPU time. And again, subscenes are stored in a binary file, so loading and unloading is insanely fast. Okay, now let's look at how we can dynamically load and unload subscenes. Okay, so let's make the system to load and unload. Let's make a new C-sharp script. Call this our subscene loader. Let's make this a simple component system. Okay, now here on our update, let's test for a key down. When we press the spacebar, let's load our subscene. So let's make that function. Okay, so we're going to have our function that receives an object of type subscene. And now in order to load the scene, we need to load it using the entity component system. We need to get the system of type scene system. So let's grab it on our on create. So we go into the world in order to get or create the system of type scene system. And then we can use our scene system in order to call load scene async. And here we need to pass in the scene ID. So we go into the subscene in order to get it. All right, so that's it. That's how you load a subscene. Now, all we need is to know our actual subscene object. So here, let's make a script to hold those references. Okay, there's a script on this game object. And here, let's just add a field and make it a singleton. Alright, so we have our scene reference and back in the editor, here we have our script with the field for our subscene and we just drag our reference, okay. And now we can go back into the subscene loader and when we press the space key, let's call our load subscene function and pass in from our subscene references, call the instance and get the map subscene. Alright, so we should be able to load our subscene whenever we press the spacebar. And just to test over here, let's select our subscene and let's disable auto load scene. So by default, it will not be unloaded. Okay, let's test. So here we are running the game and yep, there's no background, no world. And if we pause and look at the debugger over here, yep, we just have our scene and scene section. So no entities. And now if I press space, there you go, we have our subscene being loaded. So you can pause to look at it and yep, there you go, we have our subscene. So all we need is this simple function call in order to load a subscene. 
Now in order to unload, it's pretty much the same thing. We go into our scene system and we call unload of our scene. So on space, let's load. And on another key, let's unload. All right, let's see. Okay, here we are and the subscene starts off unloaded. Now press space and there you go, the subscene has been loaded. Now press the other key and there you go, now it's unloaded. Loaded, unloaded, just like that. And you can see that it's exactly instant. Awesome. Okay, now let's make it load and unload based on the player position. So here on the subscene, let's do an entities for each on the player. All right, so here we have some very simple code. So we grab the player translation. Then we do a simple math.distance between the player position and the position of the transform for the subscene. And if it's under a certain distance, then we load. If not, then we unload. All right, so that's very simple. Everything should be working. Let's test. Okay, here we are, and the scene starts off loaded. And as I move away after a while, as I get far enough, there you go, the scene unloads. And I move back to the left side, and when I'm near, it loads, go away, and unloads. So there you go, just like this. Here I'm looking at the scene and game side by side, you can see I move away, unloaded, move back, and now it's loaded. Alright, so here you can already see the basics in action. Now let's just build more of the map. All right, so here I built a lot more of the map. So you can see I just duplicated, made a ton of sections, and all of them have been converted into individual subscenes. Now in order to load and unload based on distance, we're going to use the actual position of the subscene object. Now this is probably not the best way to do it, but just for testing it should work. But for example, let's say this subscene, there you go, it's in there, so let's move the subscene transform to put it right there. And there you go, you can see this little info message telling you that offsetting the subscene doesn't actually offset the object inside, which is fine since we don't really want to offset them, we're just using this position. A more proper way to do it would be to add some sort of custom inspector, and you would simply have a vector3 with a nice little widget. But in this case, just for testing, this should do it. So let me just locate all of the transforms. All right, so I've located all of them. Now let's go back into our subscene references script. And here, instead of just a single subscene reference, let's make an array. And back in the editor, we can select our subscene reference script. Yep, there you go, there's our array. Now we can lock the inspector, select all of our subscenes and drag them all onto the array. Yep, there you go, there's our subscenes. And in our loader script, let's do it based on distance for all of our subscenes. All right, so just like that. We cycle through our subscene array, and we test for distance, and if close enough, we load. If not, then we unload. All right, so that's pretty much it, and let's test. Okay, here we are, and it seems perfectly fine. There's my player, and over here we can see our map. And if we pause and look at the editor, if there you go, only this one is loaded, so all of the other subscenes are currently unloaded. And here in the entity debugger, yep, you can see all of our subscenes, all of our scene sections, and pretty much only one of them is loaded. So now here, if I move the player and I go towards the right, and there you go, over here I'm going inside another map, and yep, it's still loaded. So if we pause, yep, over here you can see that now we have two subscenes being loaded. So here on the side by side, you can see that as I move the player, as it reaches close enough, there you go, one of them gets unloaded, and one of them starts being loaded. And as I go, yep, there you go, just like that, all of them are working. So they are being streamed in and out based on the player position. So our game scene is super performant since only a tiny bit of the map is actually loaded at once. Alright, so here you can see how the subscene system works and how you can stream parts of your level in and out. Again, this system is integral to how the Megacity demo was made. Without it, it would simply not have been possible. 
So subscenes allow you to build massive worlds while keeping your game and your editor performant since you can easily load and unload subscenes on the fly. And with subscenes you can also edit them in order to modify them using the normal game object representation. So you edit game objects then it gets converted into super fast entities. So streaming subscenes in and out coupled with the insane speed of unity dots means there's pretty much no limit to how big a world you can create. So go ahead and get started working with subscenes and make some massive worlds. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unity codemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.